Alright guys, uh, in today's video you're gonna see me doing brake pads on this uh, Toyota Camry, I'm sorry, Toyota Corolla. This is a 2011 model. If you have any year, it doesn't matter, it doesn't have to be 2011. Most of the Toyota Camrys, Corollas, they're all the same, similar procedure, right? So any Toyota, if you have front brake pads, um, first of all, you might not have a hubcap, but some cars do have cup caps like this one. Some Camrys have it. If you have alloy wheels, you don't have it then. But anyways, first of all, if you do have a hub, all you need to do is, you can use a screwdriver, just pry it from the edges, but if you don't, then you can simply just pull that off. Sometimes those little pieces, they are broken, sitting in there. Some rock or something fell out, but put this somewhere safe. Next, we're gonna remove these five lugs and take the tire off, all right? So let me set up my camera because I'm gonna need my both of my hands now. All right, guys, uh, we're gonna take off the lug nuts. If you don't have an impact gun, you have to turn these kind of clockwise, all right? I would suggest have the tire on the floor so that the road can hold it for you and then loosen up these first one or two turns and after that lift it and remove more. Careful, you don't drop the tire, hit your knee if your car is really high. But anyways, I gotta lose. Sometimes this reel will not come off, it's stuck to the hub, alright? Just put on one lug nut and then tap it from the back on the tire, like here on the back and the bottom edge. And this should pop off, alright? So, there it goes. Anyways, there we have it. It's time for us to remove these brake pads. But I'm gonna take my camera towards this angle a little bit. One thing I would suggest is leave the car keys in the ignition, all right? If you do leave it in the ignition, you should be able to take this and turn it, all right? But if you don't leave it in the ignition, the steering's gonna lock and it's gonna go clink, and that's it. You won't be able to turn it further, all right? Look how easy access you have to both of these bolts, all right? But in this case, we're only gonna remove this bottom one right here, and then we should be able to lift the caliper, slide this upper pin out, and put the caliper to the side, all right? So give me a moment to grab the tools. All right, guys, got my ratchet here with number 14, 14 millimeter socket, and we're gonna go counterclockwise to remove that bolt, all right? Very simple, guys. Take that off, take this guy, lift it up, and I should be able to slide this right out, right? This thing has good greasing and make sure both of your pins do slide, all right? And the brake pads should come out very easily, all right? See that? This guy on the top. This brake wear indicator, top, all right? So there we have it, guys. Uh, what we need to do next is, while we at it, take this brake caliper, let it sit right there, take a brake pad, I'm gonna go get a tool. Very simple guys. I am gonna take this, you could take a C-clamp and clamp this and squeeze this and the piston should compress in, all right? Do have your brake reservoir out on the top because this is gonna push fluid back into the system, right? And then make sure you do put it back in when you're done. Sometime, let's say you go to a Ziffy Loop, all these Zap Loop places, they do top off your fluid. You will have fluid coming out, right? I would even suck some of the fluid off, right? If it's overflowing, sometimes that dirty fluid, it will, it will go inside and it will overflow. Whatever you wanna do, whatever, it makes a better sense to you, all right? Either Leave it, let it flow, but which I would do not recommend, I do let it just flow up because you're not supposed to do that guys. They're not supposed to put uh, brake fluid in there for you because the reservoir does have a sensor. So as the fluid goes down, when it goes below level, bam, your brake level come on. That will indicate your brake pads are low, the fluid had to come all the way inside to fill up this uh, piston here, the, the housing here, and when you do new pro brakes on, it goes right back in, alright? So when I push this in, all really I'm doing is pushing this piston in, and the piston is pushing all the fluid back into the line, into the reservoir, all right? So, there it goes. Push, push, push. Should be easy to push this in, all right? And it should go in nice and easy, all right? 
Sometimes your brake pad will sit against this. That will make it difficult for you. But there we have it, right? So now we just need to break, wait for the brake pads. All right, guys. Uh, let me take this out of here. All right, guys. I got new brake pads here. All right, uh, Monroe. The part number is CX1210. All right, that's the part number. So again, guys, both top, you need to put this a little retainer, right? Don't put it this way. Put it this way, all right? This opening facing inward, all right? And it comes with it. Some brake pads will not come with it. That's all right. You could take the older ones and put them on. But even if you don't have it, it's all right. Only thing I didn't get in the package for these is these two little four guys. So I ordered up my own pieces. And uh, you can buy them separately. It's called a hardware kit. So that's what I bought. And it did not come with these brake pads for some reason. But all you need is a flathead screwdriver. Right? All you need is a flathead screwdriver. And all you're going to do is gently lift it up. Just like that. Right? Make sure the surface is nice and clean. And you take the new one. Just make sure you match it up. Right? Because you don't want to put the wrong one in the wrong place. Sometimes they are interchangeable. Right from left, left from right. There you go, just push it right in there, right? Simple as that, all right? And let's do the same thing for this one right here. All right, there you go, it come out. You hear that noise? If, you, if this thing touches the rotor, it will make a squealing noise, all right? So this one was facing like that, so if I take a look at it, you should have similar one, all right? And same thing for the inside too, right? You cannot go wrong, guys. Just line it properly, and then this should go right in, all right? And I'll do the same thing for the inside one. I might block the view of the camera, but I need that little space, all right? So let me get this off. There you go. And they all pretty much look the same. So let me take another one. And I'm gonna put this one in, All right? Make sure it's nice and clean. If your thing looks rusted, make sure you file it. This one looks pretty good. There you go, sticks right in, guys. And then I got one left, guys, right on the top. Same thing. There you go. I'll pick that up. I don't want to leave on that on the floor. And the reason is because if I do leave it and the car runs over with the tire, it's gonna give you a flat tire. I had a mechanic work for me one time, he did that. And then he said it's not his fault. All right guys, so next we're gonna take our brake pad. You're gonna take your brake pad and put one brake pad at a time, all right? See this top one? It's gonna work like a little spring. And also when the brake pads wear out, all the way it's gonna hit the rotor and give you a squealing noise that's why it's called a brake wear indicator because it's gonna give you indication that brake pads are low right but they are gonna make it a little difficult for you to put them in so either get the top side in first and then the bottom all right it's gotta work some magic here let me see if I can work some magic here on my own ah almost I might need the light. So let's see if I could do it without the light. Ha, I don't need light. Should be having my camera down here, but you just gotta work it, guys. Work some magic there. All right, let me get that in there because I gotta move my camera out of the way, then I'll show you guys the job that's completed. All right, guys, there you go. Got the pads in. All the way around, all right? See that? The brake pads are in. It was giving me a little difficulty here. I think my uh, shim here, the hardware kit, was a little bit sticking down, so I pushed it back up, all right? So at this point, try to turn the rotor. It should not make that squealing noise earlier we heard, all right? So this is pretty much done. All I'm gonna do is put a little bit of lube here and a little bit of lube right there. And these look pretty good, so I'm not gonna bother touching these, all right? That's a good amount of grease on it and that looks perfect right and then 
I'm gonna show you guys. All right, let me just show you guys. Um, let me get some greasing. It's up here. All right, this is my brake grease right here. So I'm gonna just take some, put some right here. Doesn't have to be too much, guys. All right, a little bit right here on the inside. A little bit here, right? What this is gonna do is it's gonna prevent that metal to metal contact a little bit. It's gonna benefit you a little bit in not creating some squeal, all right? Now, time for us to take this caliper, push it in, and then bring it down, all right? It should go in like a piece of cake, all right? Notice this line. Make sure you don't have a twist to this line, all right? And something's bothering me. All right, I know what's bothering me. This little rubber boot right here, I have to push in. All right, but I can't do it with one hand. So make sure this little boot goes in. You don't want this to be sitting on the brake pad. All right, so let me get that in and then pretty much I should be done, all right? So to get this in, all you need is I don't want nothing sharp, so I'll use this letter. Anything will work, all right, guys? Got air in a little bit, so that's what's causing it to stick out. I'm gonna have to get this and come back to you guys. All right, guys, there you go. I got the boot in, and you can simply take this caliper, make sure your boot on the pin right there goes on good, also, all right? And the caliper should drop right in, guys. And then what we're gonna do is take your 14 millimeter bolt right here, put that in right there, all right, guys? Very simple. All right, just make sure this line is not twisted, because since we took off and we did it, a lot of people, uh, they twist it, then you have like a twist here. What that's gonna do is it's gonna restrict the flow of the fluid. It might come in, push the piston, and lock it down. It might not go back, and you might have a spongy pedal, all right? All right, guys, torque this. Uh, that's what I'm gonna do. You guys are not gonna see me doing that, but torque this, and that's it. Put the wheel on, tighten the lug nuts, torque the tires, and that's it. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe. If you need help with anything, send me a message. Bye-bye.